Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha, the preacher. Hey. <laughs> for the record, I do love Cardi B. I'm just saying. Anyway. <laughs> and I do have my a song I made up. It's not a complete song. It's just like a, I think they call it a clause. A clause in a song or a whatever. The, the chorus, there you go, the main chorus or whatever. So it's in response to her WAP song. I have something in response to WAP. But anyway, that's another video. <laughs> but this is part two of the new Trinity reading, okay? So we had a part one, two, and three of the um, first Trinity reading, but part three got lost. My phone went through some type of shift, and during the shift, that video it disappeared off of my phone. So maybe one day part three will pop back up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> um, but this is part two of the new one, okay? Because there's uh, two sets of... Um, Trinity videos now, Trinity readings, two sets now. And so real quick, just a real quick recap, but before I even do the recap, let me um, at least pull the cards of what I was led to, because um, I've been struggling <sighs> getting back started with this. I was like, you know, I was struggling <laughs> with this, getting this reading, this part two, don't going again. You know, so it looked like it's two cards, perfect, because, you know, I like that duality thing. So, I was led, when I was looking, you know, just doing a quick look at the table, trying to decide if I was going to just collect the cards and don't do a part two. But I got motivated. I was listening to another um, reader, and I got motivated while listening to the reader, and I was motivated to look at the, um, you know, in the Trinity, we're looking at the... Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're looking at the Father right now. The Spirit, the energy of the Father in our lives. Whether you're a man or a woman, okay, your Father energy, you know, we all need fatherly energy in our life. That fatherly energy, that connection, you know, that, that, that male authority, you know. So, um, the cards are pulled. I'm not going to look at them yet. I'm just going to just set them to the side. I know I pulled them, so they're there. All right, so um, the angel messages for the Father God, Father God, was released. And it says, let go and focus on what is positive and uplifting. Remember, we all who's in this under the Trinity reading... Under this Trinity reading, we are separated, divorced people, you know, and uh, we were, you know, once in ministry, you know, we've been pastors. I'm on the path of pastorship. I'm on the path of pastorship and you're on this journey with me. But some of you have been pastors, assistant pastors, um, deacons, trustees on the nursing board and all that. And, you know, life happened and you either left the church, got kicked out the church. Um, and then, you know, next thing you know, your family got attacked and, whew, and, you know, and so much stuff happened during your life at the church. And now you find yourself in the streets. We in the streets. People like you and me. People who got the Holy Ghost. People who know who the Father is, who know who the Son is, and people who have the Holy Ghost, and we live with the relationship of the Holy Ghost leading and guiding us and steering us up and pumping us and directing us. And, you know, we got to depend on the Holy Ghost like never before because God the Father, He is working on the churches. And right now, He's asked me to pull. You know, two more cards from the love deck. 
You know, he want us to know that he love him. Love us. He, Father God, loves us. He created us. We are special to him. You know? And right now, a lot of us don't really feel him. We don't really feel him in our life right now. Because everything seems like it's falling apart. He's restructuring the whole church system, the whole religious system, all of that. Religious and church and, you know, all that's being reconfigured. Who knows how long it's going to take? Who knows? But all hell broke loose with churches and religion on our time. Me and you on our time. And our families and our marriages got hit with this shit. And I'm fighting back. That's why I'm in the streets. You know? Hey, the, 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 the weapons formed against me may not prosper, but they sure hurt. <laughs> they forget to tell you that these weapons... They may not prosper, but you, we still feel them. We're still being attacked. But God say, let go of the ministries of the past. Let go of those churches. Let go of the marriages linked to those relationships. You know what I'm saying? Let go. Let go of all of that. Walk away. Look, look at her. You know, walk into something new. Put it this way. I'm not going to marry a pastor in the future. Because I'm on, on my uh, road to pastorship. Okay, and if I end up a co-pastor, I'm not co-pastoring at the same church your first, second, third wives and stuff were at. No, we're going to have a whole new, whole new, whole new. Just like when you get married and you don't want to move in behind the last woman, you know, you marry a man. And he wants you to move into the house that he didn't have two, three, four, five other women in. <laughs> uh-uh. We got to get us a new house together. I don't want all that negative energy, you know. And it's even good with a single man. If a man been on his own too long, he too independent, you know. This is sisters talking. Um, You know, it's good too. Let me flip these cards over. Maybe God don't want me to wait. <laughs> Maybe you don't want me because I'm talking now. You know what I'm saying? It's coming out. And the cars ain't come out. But, you know, if a man's been single too long, it may be a good idea to have him sell his house and buy another so you can start fresh so that he won't be holding on to his single mindset, his single power, his singleness, his single authority. You living in his single world. You said I do at the altar and then moved into his single life. Yeah, either you're going to be living with previous women or you're going to be living with his single ways. So that's why it's good to when you marry a woman, buy a new house, get a new congregation, start fresh. But anyway, um, whoa, um, the three of pentacles, the three of pentacles and the two of swords. The two of swords. Okay. Um, you know, when you're separated, you know, you ain't going to get no loving. When you, I mean, you know, when you're together, you know, it feel all good and stuff, you know, <laughs> when you're together. But we separated now. Remember, pinky finger promise. We are not going back. We're not going back to the old ways, the old life. We're not. The old 
church, the old religion, the old marriage. You know, we're not going back to that. It didn't work. Tad of that. It was poison and toxic. Toxic. And if you're like, it wasn't that bad, well, look where I'm at. I'm in the streets. So it was that bad. Because <laughs> I'm in the streets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm in the streets now, and I'm going to make the best of these streets. But, you know, when you separate it, it's best to have no contact. Zero contact. You know what I mean? Um, you know, in my case, you know, the only contact that's really needed is just the uh, the support. You know, because I've been a, a submissive, obedient stay-at-home wife and mom, you know, with no income. So I I have some financial support that I have to depend on, you know. I have to depend on something, you know. So there are, and if you got kids together, you know, you're going to have to have visitation schedules and all that, you know. But where possible, do not contact each other. No texting, guilt tripping each other. No more guilt tripping. You know, I'm I'm really, I do the guilt trip thing really bad. <laughs> I'm guilty of the guilt tripping. I will, ooh, you did this, you did that, you did that. <laughs> you know, I'm one of those. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But, um, but yeah, so no guilt tripping and no, um, you know, just, no more texting. Just block each other. Block each other if you need to. No emailing. No reminiscing. You know. Get rid of the pictures. Get rid of the memories laying around. The photos. You know. It's time to clean up. Let it go. Let it go. God said let it. God said let it go. Release. Release. Because he snatched you out. You know. If you already live separately and you know one of you, especially if one of you is in the street and the other one is still living the normal life you know what i mean <laughs> that's hard that's so fucking hard but you know it's it's where we at now it's you know and it's not nobody's fault anymore you know we kind of moving past the the blaming stage you know we're at the that's why we're doing the pinky finger promise because we're doing work now we're kind of moving out of the blaming stage and we're looking at ourselves now because we, you know, we're back in God's grace. We're back in God's grace. I mean, <laughs> you know, put your blinders on for a little bit. You know, enjoy God. Enjoy Jesus. J Jesus wants us to be wealthy, you know. He wants us wealthy, you know. Let's keep our eye on him. You know. So, one step at a time. One day at a time. One tear at a time. But our tears are basically dried up. Now, it don't mean that we'll never cry about it. But, hopefully I won't have no more screaming sessions over my past life. Over, you know... You know, I hope that scream that my neighbors heard, my neighbors heard the scream. The person I was on the telephone with, they heard the scream. That scream was, it just let out, all, you know, like so much pain. That's why silence is not good. Silence is not good. Oppression is not good. It's not. Submission is not good. Because all that stuff stay bottled in. It stay bottled in. And then I screamed out all, all that stuff. I screamed it all out. All the pain. All the disappointment. In Jesus' name, I'm saying all. I'm claiming it, you know. But the majority of it, you know what I'm saying? It might be some residue in there, but, you know, it'll it'll work itself out. I'm not stressing about nothing no more. You know? Hell, the police might be surrounded by house, you know, tonight. I ain't got time to be worrying about no shit that's gone. 
That shit is gone. That life is gone. You know? Stand up at that pool pit. All them people out there, you know. <laughs> you speak. I can just see y'all out there. I can see y'all. I can just see some of y'all up standing up there bringing the house down. And you can't wait to have that again. I understand. I ain't never had it. But I'm just saying, I, I, I dream about it all the time. I, I, I visualize all the time. I know it's going to happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if not, then, hey, I'm having fun on the way. I'm having fun. You know, I'm doing these videos and meeting new people. I'm about to, you know, join, you know, a new church. And I'm about to join church again, y'all. Only a person that's, you know, been without it, you know, for years can understand my tears. I can't get those sermons back. All those sermons I could have put out there to save people. I've had so many people die, you know, that had I been preaching, you know, maybe, I don't know, you know what I'm saying, I don't know, you know, I gotta let that go though, see, I gotta let that go, I gotta let that go, because God saved them somewhere else, you know, Where my disobedience, one monkey, this one monkey right here, my disobedience didn't stop God's show. I don't have the power to save or not save anybody. Jesus already did it. <laughs> so we stressing for nothing. Stressing for nothing. I've been stressing for nothing. You know. So it's time for me to let that go. And think on positive things. Think about all the saved souls that's going to be saved because I'm in the streets. If I was never in these streets, I wouldn't be preaching. Because see, under the old rules I was under, the old rules I was under, you know, a disobedient wife. I mean, you can be an obedient wife and expect it to be silent. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if you a disobedient wife, you know, a, a wife that's going against the grain, you know you ain't going to do nothing in the church. Because men dominate the church. They make all the decisions. In the majority of the churches. And they dictate what women can and cannot do. That's just the reality of it. You know, so, you know, we in the streets and find you somewhere in these streets to preach. Find you some where's churches out here that don't have all these rules. Don't, you know, they, it's just different. Find one that work for you and your family. Take your family. I mean, find a church that work for you and your family. And so. So, no contact right now, guys, unless it's absolutely necessary, like, you know, to exchange money, like alimony, child, child support, stuff like that, you know. But texting, to guilt trip each other and all of that, reminiscing, you know, I remember when, and sending pictures, you know, um, sending sex videos, you know. <laughs> You know, you know, I mean, we get desperate, you know, <laughs> you know, the person ain't giving us the attention we want and we just trying to, you know, we, 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 we crying out. It's like a cry out, you know, <laughs> you know, so I'm, I pray that when I scream, that screaming just released all those desires for attention, you know, <laughs> all that need for attention, you know, love me, love me, play with me, 
come get me, save me, you know, make me happy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, all that pathetic stuff, you know, <laughs> toward the end of a relationship, you know how you just get all pathetic, ugh, what a pathetic stage is the worst, you know, <sighs> anyway, but see, you know, again, she's turned off. He's trying to force, force something, but she's not quite, you know, her hand is down. I mean, she's, she wants to do something. You can tell she's ready. She's ready to do something, but she's not quite, you know, with this card, you know what I'm saying? With this card here, basically the lover's card in reverse and with him trying to offer something and her head is turned away you know like mm, I, I I'm I'm so ripe I'm so ready but ooh, I don't know about that you know so that's what it's like you know when you're separating and divorced and still trying to pick at each other. You know, you pick. It's shooting blanks. Shooting blanks. Go shoot in fertile ground. You know, this is dead. This is dead. So shoot, shoot, shoot your best shots in fertile ground. Because this ground is dead. What we was doing in the past, the, the marriage we had before, the church we had before, the job we had before, the life we had before, all of that's gone. The parents, you know, a lot of us, our parents are passing away. I mean, you know, it's a lot going on. The kids are grown and they're gone. I mean, they're still asking for money, but they still, you know, they're grown and gone. A lot of us are empty nesters, too. Empty nesters on top of all this bullshit. When I say losing everything at once, <laughs> family members, kids get grown on you. I mean, spouse, lose your spouse, jobs, homes. Woo, woo, you know. And for me personally, it all started in 2008, and it just been downhill ever since. 2008, and been going ever since. Ever since. Er, 2008, y'all. 2008. That was Bush. Uh, the election year of Bush. Was it Bush? Yeah, Bush and Obama. You know. Everybody hate. You remember how everybody hated Bush, like, you know, like in Trump, Trump and Bush were, you know, everybody in the world hated uh, Bush. It was hard to find one person that liked him. <laughs> you know, that was a mess. So it was really easy for the next person to come in and look like a savior for real, for real, for real. But um, but as far as your past, you know, pinky finger promise, this is over. Um... So this is just, you know, I guess part two or just an additional, um, you know, I think I'm ready to wrap this up or let me, let me just, let me light sage and be sure. But that's all I was really wanting to do. Um, cause you can watch part one, you know, if you like, so go ahead, click like subscribe. And leave a comment below. Say hi. Say something to me. I don't bite. You know. <laughs> Not completely. Not yet. So. Um, but God is good. And thank you guys for being here. As I transition. You know. And I tell you. I'm a clingy type. I am. I have attachment issues. <laughs> I know I do. I just. You know. I'd rather be honest. You know. I'm clingy. I have attachment issues, but yet I'm a Leo, 
and I'm very feisty and you know <laughs> it just don't make no sense <laughs> so people like me probably are better off single you know what I mean it don't make sense to drive men crazy it just don't make no you know it, it don't make no sense to drive men crazy <laughs> it just don't. and if I do do it in a way in a polyamorous way meaning that you know being a pastor even if I'm a solo pastor you know just Dr. Leisha Preacher all on her own, which is cool. Because I grew up listening to uh, Martha Jean the Queen in Detroit. And Martha Jean the Queen, she was divorced. She had a church, a funeral home. You know, she just lived her life. And she, you know, she was the queen. And she passed the church, you know, and was a businesswoman in the city and had a radio show, you know. So I just see myself being another queen like that. But I'm just Dr. Leisha the Preacher, that's all, you know. And I can be everybody's wife and everybody's girlfriend. I'll be it for everybody. <laughs> it's that cash style. Cash style. I'm, I'm for everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm for everybody. You know, when you're the pastor, you can be for everybody. You can be everybody's wife, everybody's husband, everybody's girlfriend, everybody's mama, everybody's. That's what the Bible say. Be what people need. Be what people need. You know. You know, feed the hungry. You know, take the homeless off the streets. You know, improve housing for the poor. You know, stuff like that. You know, increase jobs through generational wealth. You know, stuff like that. We got to give, give back to the fundamentals the basics get back to the basics the fundamentals mm -hmm. stuff like that so I I, I I still consider myself just gonna be a, a poly preacher because um I just want to be for everybody you know if it's a single guy in a church and if he look up at the pulpit and see a wife in me you know I'm not gonna ever be his wife <laughs> but you know that might be what it takes for him to stay focused. Dr. Leisha the Preacher is my pastor. And in my mind and my spirit right now, I claim her as my wife. So, you know, I'm just going to be a blessing to her and be under her leadership and learn to be good to all the women in my life, especially the women that are blood to you. Before you take on a wife, set up your sisters and nieces and you know, set if you got some family, you know, sow into your family before you invest into a whole. Because once you get a wife, honey, you got to leave and cleave. You got to leave all that other stuff behind. Parents and siblings and all that. You got to leave that stuff behind. So anything you're going to do to invest in your family's generational wealth, do that as a single man. When you're a single man... You know, you set your people up. And then you go set up a family. It's never about you. <laughs> I mean, I know, you know, you want it to be. But, you know, you can't renege on... I mean, Jesus came to save our souls. But God still wants y'all to work and provide for women and children. Period. That ain't changed. That, Jesus did not change the fact that women still have uh, labor, at, you know, pain at birth. That ain't changed. So until women stop having pain at birth, then men need to work and provide for all women and children. All women and children. Now, if a woman chooses to work, fine. You know, and you all agree and blah, 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 blah. But otherwise, men got to step up. When you're together, you live together. But when you separate, you all, your, your lives should mirror each other. Well, when you're together, you should look good together. And when you separate, you should look the same separated too. So if you in the house, your wife should be in the house. You got a car, she should have a car. 
Whether you're together or separated, it don't matter. You still need to take care of the women and children in your life. Period. That's how I teach. So if you want to hang with me, you know, hang with me because I'm going to teach women how to be women and men how to be men. You know, and it's, you know, Dr. Leisha, the preacher's flavor and way to do things. And all I can do is just share what I know. <laughs> you know, that's it. Share it, share it, share it. So, anyway. Um, I think I'm just done. Yeah, you know, when something's done, you just, like, I mean, you know, we already reviewed this stuff in video one. So, it don't really make sense to keep, you know, regurgitating. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think that's what we do with these relationships. We keep, you know, trying to revive dead stuff. This reading, this, our past is dead. You know, did we learn from it? And can we take the what we learn from it and help other people? Yeah, that's what the street, that's why we're here in the streets. Take that information, all that history, take it, Make sense out of it and help somebody. It ain't to feel guilty about no. It ain't for it's not for us to stay stuck. No, no, no. We ain't go through all that so we can, you know, be stuck and be depressed and don't love nobody else and all of that. No, take it and go and help because other people are going through the same thing. Other people are going through the same thing and help them with your knowledge. Help them with your wisdom. Help them. Whether you secure in a marriage or in the streets, either way it go, hey, do what God purposed and called you to do. Whether you are up high or down low. And so right now, Dr. Leisha, the preacher, her crew, we are down low and we are on the rise. Okay? We're going to rise together. And so I know that my subscription is going to increase. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to keep putting this information out there. Because I know it got to be some other women out there who are like me. Who know what God has for them. Who has a vision. And no matter what she's gone through in her life, her vision ain't changed. <laughs> No matter how many kids, husbands, jobs, governments, churches, it don't matter when God give you a vision, nothing, nothing can change it. Nothing. People's doubts in you. You know, I've had people say, you and your family, y'all going to burn in hell. Whoa, we're going to burn in hell for real? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, you know what? If me and my family gonna burn in hell, me and my family helped your family for so many years. We helped y'all. We helped y'all when nobody else would. So if we burn in hell, where y'all gonna be? I'm just saying. I mean, you know, so we gotta be careful what we say to people, how we judge and condemn people, you know? You know, so I knew once I had my first suicide attempt that that was it for me. That was it. My life, I could never be traditional again. Never, ever, never, ever. People go, would always look at me as his crazy wife. His crazy wife. Forever, forever. And I don't want to be nobody's crazy wife. No. Mm -mm. I refuse to live that way. I lived that way for as long as I had to because I had children. Wives, we sacrifice everything to make sure that our kids are good. You know, crazy or not. I mean, crazy don't stop you from... Um, Carrying out commitments and, you know, having a core value system. Being crazy don't even stop you from the Holy Ghost from working either. You know, mental illness. 
mental breakdowns and stuff, it don't stop the Holy Ghost. <laughs> nothing stops God. Nothing. Nothing stops God's purpose and calling in your life. I don't care what you go through. It just don't matter. God's love is forever and it's eternity. And it moves through any bondage, oppression, anything. It, it just busts it all up, you know, when the time is right. Because we do have to endure some stuff. We have to endure some stuff, each one of us. And my heart go out to men in, the, in these churches, you know, because I... I've seen with my own eyes and I've experienced in my own life the amount of pressure that's placed on these, especially young men, especially when they're young, when they're young. And they're getting married at like 20, 21, 22. And then they got babies that, you know, real quick and all that. It is a lot. It's a lot. I get it. And God is working on it. God is working on it. But for right now, in order to stop hurting each other and pulling each other down, because it's a two-way street, can't one person fight by themselves in a marriage, you know, for 5, 10, 15, 20 years? That's impossible. One person doing all the fighting by themselves. One person committing all the problems by themselves for years, really. In a relationship, when it's two people in it, you know, but, you know, it's time to stop hurting each other and blaming each other. And the best way to do it is to stop talking. Take a break, a long break. In my case, in my case, I'm thinking a year. I need a good year to just have tunnel vision on God. You know, we have a lot of de-programming to do. Because when you're in a relationship with somebody, you pick up and exchange a lot of energy. You know, a lot. And all that, you know, you know, all that deprogramming. And so, but we're at the stage when we, we've been pulled apart already. You know, we've been pulled apart. So the largest part of our situation is over. We're, whoo, Lord Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Whew. But, you know, let go. No more talking on the phone, no more texting, no more emailing, unless it's, you know, it's business, strictly business stuff. You know, you got, you know, contracts and stuff you got to handle, business, then do what you got to do. Kids, if you got kids and visitation schedules and, you know, you got to handle business in life, no matter who, no matter who, <laughs> you know. But uh, but scale back, scale back, because you're separated now. And you got to learn how to trust that space. You know, it's the unknown. Because <laughs> who you were before you met that person, you're not that person either. <laughs> that person been gone, the person you were before, you know, you were married. And the person during your marriage or in your relationship or at your church, the position you held at your church, you know what I'm saying? Wherever, however it's applied to you, it's gone now. It's gone. So you got to allow this break, this space, this time to heal and, and get your cup refilled. And only God can do it. Only God can do it. It's so easy right now to jump into another relationship. And let that person fill you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you don't know what they got in them. You don't know what they're going to put in you. Don't let people come. And you feel feeling empty right now. Your cup is kind of empty. Like, I feel real empty right now. You know? I don't, I don't even feel stupid no more. You know? I don't feel stupid. You know? Um, I'm a lot less embarrassed. You know? Because it's embarrassing when you're in the street, you know, and you know you earned your way there, you know, somewhere, somehow, you know, you know you, you know, deserve it. I mean, even if other people, you know, contributed, you still know you deserve it, <laughs> you know? 
You still know you deserve it. You know. And when you can get to that place, and it's so hard, it's so hard to say, you know, well, that time you didn't stand up for yourself. Well, that time when you negotiated and remember that time you, you know, yeah, well, you, you could have chose differently and accepted a, a different set of consequences. You know, we have to, we got to woman up and man up. And then now be ready for our cup to be filled. Let that cup be filled, but we got to let go. Okay. All right. But um, I love you guys. Um, stay positive. Uh, make comments. You know, keep watching me. Watch who you need to watch for the different phases and levels and stages of your life. You know, stay prayed up. You know, fast. Um... You know, go to church, you know, find somewhere for you and your family. You know, if you, you know, if you may be separated, but if you got the kids with you, you and the kids can go to church together. You know what I'm saying? You know, somewhere where they, with a nice kids department, you know, that keep the kids safe, you know. Um, some churches, you know, their children's department is not staffed well enough. And the kids don't be safe. You know, there's nothing worse than your kids getting raped at church or one of your kids getting pregnant by one of the, you know, just pregnant from somebody at church. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Kids sneaking and having sex at church. Stuff like that got to be dealt with. You can't just let stuff like that go on at church. You know what I'm saying? So those are the kind of things we're going to talk about, you know. Letting the older members marry younger members and, you know, you know, we should, you know, church is going to have to set some rules. You know, it just gets too, it's unruly there and people are bringing their children there. You know, they, they do all this work to provide and live in nice school districts and, and then they bring their kids to church and then all this stuff happens to their kids at church. And it's like, and no one ever talks about it. So now, Dr. Leisha, the preacher, you know, I'm offering a platform to talk about these things, but to fix them. Because you know in the streets, if God bless us to really open up some churches and stuff, actual brick and mortar churches. I mean, I'm cool with this, but if we actually go in brick and mortar, then, you know, we got to, I mean, these things are going to be coming from the streets into the building. And we, you got to have stuff set up in place as your church grow to protect women and children you know you do women and children you got to protect them you know at home and in that church building you got to if not then you know your the church is harming families then if you're not addressing these issues and if you're not you know so i'm kind of glad i'm kicked out of traditional life i'm i feel completely removed from the old ways of doing things i feel completely removed and you know and in in my conversation you may still hear me speak of old ways you know as i'm learning new ways you know but but in my heart in my mind in my spirit you know god is conditioning me for the new even though my conversation may still have old language. You know what I'm saying? So just hang in there with me one day at a time. One prayer at a time. One fast at a time. You know, one YouTube video at a time. And we're going to get there, y'all. We're going to get there. One day, y'all going to see Dr. Alicia Preacher, you know, standing up at a podium or something. Speaking at a church or a women's conference or, you know, I may actually get as big as Joyce Meyer or something like that. Because I never forget. I think I said that in a video, but I remember seeing her and I had never seen a woman on TV really do anything like that. I mean, it was just something different. I mean, it's probably happened before, you know what I'm saying? But in my lifetime, in that appointed time in my life, I noticed. 
a woman doing something that I see myself doing. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I see myself doing that. Wow. You know, and guess what? I'm, I'm ready. I'm here. I'm here. I'm on point, you know. And she wasn't no, you know, well-polished woman on the stage. You know, she came in rough, you know, off the streets, too. So, who knows? <laughs> we street women, hey, you know. <laughs> we make a difference in the world. Follow me on my other videos. I have a playlist. In my playlist, there's a HOES, H-O-E-S, Helping Others Evolve. Holes have godly purpose too. And I'm studying biblical women. Women with bad reputations. You know. But God used these women in mighty ways. And that's what my ministry is about. To point out how bad street women can still make a difference in the world. Yes, we do. We make a difference in the world. Hey. Hey. I'm just saying. <laughs> Mm, love you guys. Bye. And click like, subscribe, and donate to my cash app, dollar sign, Dr. Leisha the Preacher.